Th thank you, Chair. Um, the Chief, on the issue of bringing in contract employees, um, Officer Papathanasio uh, has suggested that uh, the, un uh, the union rep, that this would be a problem for them. Do you want to talk about how you're gonna, going to deal with that? Obviously, a, in my view, a bigger problem for them is the overwork and the in extended stress of, of being short so many officers. But uh, tell me how you plan to work with the officers who are concerned about bringing in non-sworn officers to do even parts of this work. So I, I've been in uh, uh, discussions with the union about this specific issue. Um, they have um, uh, mentioned a, a number of concerns and our, our conversations uh, and, and our intent is to try and address those concerns uh, because I think where we both, what we agree on is that these officers need some relief, that we need to, to, to allow these officers to get more time off, to stop being held over on their shifts, to stop being forced to work um, uh, overtime when they, when they would rather be home with their families. So we, again, I've talked about the strategies that we have in place, but this, the, the contract security would be a temporary solution um, until we can get more officers hired. Um, and my intent is to try and address the concerns that the union has with regard to uh, uh, where these contract security officers are assigned. And for that program to really work, what kind of, what kind of temporary program would it be? Would you anticipate a, a multi-year bid or a one-year bid with possible extensions? Or what are, you, what are you thinking about as you begin to think about how you look for these contract employees? So, I, I, look, realistically, I think it's going to take us um, at least two to three years to get up to our, our staffing in terms of hiring new officers. So having that as, as a, an option to use over the next two or three years, um, I would like to have that option. Just to be sure we're straight on this, um, hiring the officers to get to the officers you currently are allowed to have is – the, the problem here, as opposed to the Congress saying, we're gonna give you 100 more officers than you're currently capped at. That's an unrealistic moment for us to think about. Your, your goal is to fill the slots that you already uh, have been allowed to have, and you're 400 short. Are you 400 short right now of, yes, of meeting that number? Yeah, actually 457 short. 457? Yes, sir. Um, if I understood your thought also of hiring 280 new officers a year for the next three years, understanding that other officers will retire and find other opportunities, and you, I, that number sounds about right to me to get up to where you need to be. How, how long is the training process from the time you bring an officer into the training environment until you, you have them available for service? It, from the time they're hired to the time you can actually deploy them by themselves is close to a year. Close to a year. So hiring people, annuitants who have retired but are willing to come back to work is one of your thoughts? That's correct because you'd be hiring back someone who has that experience and they could, they could go back to work day one. And when you hire laterally, would you just, uh, would you just and try to evaluate the level of training that officer already has and then determine what additional training is necessary before you put them into the line? Exactly, yes. All right. Um, the, uh, I think every police force in America, certainly every big, big police force in America, has this, a lot of that same challenge of just people leaving the, either the big force for a smaller uh, force in some, na some other community or leaving with frustration this whole idea that somehow defunding the police was uh, ever any real option for uh, the country. The inspector generals testified before us that uh, he, he thinks that uh, in his view, restructuring to where the uh, US Capitol Police was more of a protective agency uh, instead of a law enforcement agency. I'm not absolutely sure I know what he means by that, uh, but why don't you give us your sense of what, after six months on the job, what's your vision of what the Capitol Police Force would look like two years from now and five years from now and maybe even longer if you've thought through 
the, the, the way that this force should function to best do its job? Well, thank you for, for asking that question. I, I, uh, first, I, I think that uh, where, where I agree with the Inspector General is the fact that we need to expand and enhance our ability to investigate threats against Congress, to provide protection to members against Congress, uh, to uh, our counter surveillance activities, to enhance security in the home districts, as I've mentioned. Um, and uh, so in that regard, we need to expand our protection capabilities. But we, we make no mistake, we continue to have to be a police department as well. The, the difference between the uh, U.S. Capitol and the White House or the CIA or, um, you know, other, other facilities uh, is that we are open to the public. Someone can walk in off the street, now, not now because of COVID, but someone could walk in off the sidewalk, come through the doors and say, I just like to look around. I want to walk around. And that, so we deal with the public every day. We deal with demonstrations every day. We have uh, um, to respond to crimes um, most days. We are um, handling demonstrations. We're making arrests. Um, we're staffing posts. We do crowd control, visitor control, employee screening, crime prevention, response to calls for service, crisis negotiations, um, all of which are part of being a police department. So while I, I agree that we need to uh, expand our protection capabilities, uh, I don't think that we can walk too far away from our police responsibilities as well, because they will remain. So in answer to your question about where I think we need to go, one of the ways that I believe that we need to uh, expand our uh, protection capabilities is to take this, uh, the work that we do in terms of investigating threats, take the, uh, the, uh, our intelligence responsibilities, and make those invest investigatory and intelligence responsibilities and create a new uh, bureau and have a new assistant chief, uh, an additional assistant chief. So you'd have, uh, uh, I think our dignitary protection and protection responsibilities have grown. That continues to grow. Uh, the need there, the case, the workload has increased. Um, uniform services will always likely be the largest uh, bureau that we have. But looking at intelligence and investigations and creating a new bureau with its own assistant chief, I believe is the direction that we need to go. Um, this, this then um, uh, speaks directly to the IG's recommendation that we, to uh, move toward more of a protection focus because that's what this would allow the department to do. Thank you. I th I'll have more questions uh, later if we have time for a second round. Uh, thank you, Chairman. Uh, thank you very much, Senator Blunt. Uh, next up uh, virtually uh, is Senator Warner, who is the chair of the Intelligence Committee, um, also has played a very important role uh, in our responses uh, since January 6th and before then to other threats to our 